So let me, um, I'll do a little introduction. Um, good morning, good afternoon, I guess, everybody. Um, my name is David Chinnery. I'm here from Cornell Cooperative Extension, and we're doing our Lunch in the Garden series of Zoom programs. And we've had a lot of good attendance here, and we certainly appreciate everybody that's here today uh, being along with us. Um, today, it's not going to be me talking, which is really nice for me. I'm going to get to sit back and see a Zoom for a change. Um, so we have Denise Maurer, one of our master gardeners, um, here today. She's going to talk about contain your garden. And a lot of folks know Denise throughout the capital area because Denise does a lot of great programs. Um, she's got programs on all different sorts of gardening subjects and her gardening subjects are always happy ones. Usually for me, I'm talking about bugs or things dying and gloom and doom. And it's nice because Denise has colorful talks, happy talks, and uh, lots of good gardening information here. So Denise, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to be watching the chat box as well as Marcy. And um, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat box and we'll talk about the questions at the end. So, I think we're ready. All set to go. Well, thank you, David. Um, yes, it's, it, it is going to be a happy talk, and um, that's what I try to do when, whenever I'm putting something together. My, my background is color and design as an interior decorator, so I'm all about the pretty picture. And um, today, hopefully, I'm going to share with you lots of tips on how to create your own beautiful pictures in your garden. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, I got lots to share with you, and so I don't want to um, delay. Denise, you're muted. Yeah, Denise, you muted yourself somehow. Probably when you brought your cursor down yeah it's the bot at the bottom corner maybe underneath your slides there we go sorry guys there wow. we go good <laughs> I'm back again i can't touch my computer i guess um anyway i was asking what you thought about this beautiful uh, container here just rambling down the hillside I'm sure that I picked this up from some botanical garden, but I think it really um, illustrates how um, much impact a container can have in our gardens, even when surrounded with all of the beautiful flora that we have. I muted myself again. No, you're muted? muted. You're good. We can hear you. I'm good. So how come I can't advance? Here we go. Okay. Sorry guys, we're all learning. Um, <laughs> some of the benefits of container gardening are that they're great for small spaces, it can protect your plants from wildlife, um, it's an opportunity to convey, contain invasive plants. Uh, it's also um, perfect for people with limitations because we don't have to get down on our knees and whatnot. Containers elevate our gardens to us. Because they're smaller in size, they are more uh, less maintenance. Um, also, it's an opportunity to have some edibles nearby your, your kitchen, like herbs and vegetables. Um, they are time saving. Again, you know, when you think about these large gardens that um, that we some of us maintain, I do maintain, and um, it takes it takes a lot of hours. So containers are something that you can um, maintain with, you know, oftentimes, depending on how many you have, you know, 30 minutes a week. And they make spectacular focal points. So I'm going to show you, um, take you through the entire process of containers, you know, from choosing your containers, choosing your flowers, and the actual process of, of putting the design together. And uh, so we're going to start with choosing your containers. So um, I just think this cello is spectacular, um, talking about repurposing objects into to garden art you know this just sets the scene for containers and how versatile they can be because containers can be anything that 
can hold soil and provide drainage. And if they don't already provide drainage, we have means of, of doing that so that you can um, add the drainage to the aspect. So this cello was perfect for that. Window boxes and railings are another form of, um, of uh, containers. And uh, often window boxes are perfect to grace your windows in the front of your home or also your deck railings and even fences and gates. Raised elevated uh, garden beds uh, make it easier to work. It also is great for being able to give the best soil to your, um, your plantings, be it vegetables, herbs, or, or garden uh, flowers, excuse me. But again, because they're elevated, they are um, not as tough on your back and um, you can put very good quality soil in there and not have to cover all of the earth. There's been a really um, strong surge in developing adaptive gardening containers where we can stand upright and do our gardening. And here are just a, a few of them. And I think it's us baby boomers that are actually um, putting the designers to test because they keep trying to come up with more and more attractive options for gardening. And I just discovered this white one um, this week as I was revamping my, my program and I was like, oh my gosh, that is so attractive. It just, it, it's a garden into itself. But again, very convenient when uh, to work sitting and standing and saves the back, also the knees, I might add. Hanging containers are another form of pot um, that are wonderful in the growing season. Super to use on porches or underside elevated decks. I like to use them in multiples because um, more is more is better in some cases, but I think it just makes it more inviting and more dramatic when you use them in, in multiples. They do require more grooming because their container is so small, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Repurposed objects you can have a lot of fun with. In fact, I have another talk on DIY garden art um, where we talk about making objects from things that you find around your home. Um, but here you see a couple illustrations, one with the galvanized containers on the left and that have been outfitted with plantings and then grouped in this very fun vignette. And then on the right, you have a former stool that got a second life by just taking and placing a drawer front on uh, top of the seat and um, marrying them with colors and whatnot. I, I love the illustration of the red using um, the container, works with the flowers, works with the accessories that have been set around it. And um, those are some of the tips we're gonna be getting into. Ornamental pots um, are a very traditional container for your, um, your flowers. And here you see um, a, um, a numerous display, a large display of them, but you can use urns, concrete, metal, and glazed pottery as um, containers for your, your flowers or vegetables or shrubs or trees. Um, here's a collection of glazed pots. Sometimes they're referred to as Vietnam um, pottery. And uh, you can see that they're very, very large in size. Container gardening is best done on a large scale as far as a pot goes. Now, some people are hesitant to use them. They might want to go with the, the resin um, or the lightweight plastic ones. Um, I, I like to think of as a container as an investment. And I also think that the container combined with what you put into it makes your overall work of art, if you will. So um, I am a big fan of these, these glazed containers. Um, they can hold a lot of soil, but they don't necessarily have to. Um, some people are worried about keeping them and moving them around. Uh, where we have ours, I don't move them that often. I will turn them upside down in the winter months. I do leave them outside because their walls are so thick, they, they, they survive quite nicely. But if you do have any concerns, you can just put some bubble wrap inside them and that will provide a little bit more insulation. The key is you don't wanna have anything in there that could freeze and swell up. And if you don't, your pots are gonna be just fine. 
Other considerations on your containers, make sure they have drainage. And if they don't, you can provide it. If it's metal, you can um, drill holes through it. If it's ceramic or glass, they do make special um, drill bits for them and, and you can still provide drainage. But if it is an impossibility, um, you can add a few layers, a few inches in a large pot, I'm assuming, um, to the bottom of your container and your water will um, go down to that area and will not wick up into the soil as quickly as if it were all soil. Remember that your containers are gonna need to at least six hours of sun, so you're gonna wanna select locations where you can do that unless you're doing up a container that is specifically for the shade. And also keep in mind that the size of your container is relative to the plant's growth. In other words, you know, you want to have containers that are going to support the roots um, throughout the growing season, which in our case is about four or five months if we push it. Um, and try to avoid toxins, containers that have had a former life using toxins. I think about paint cans and um, any petroleum products or any pesticides. So those I would um, tend to stay away from because you don't want to contaminate your plants. And uh, just one tip I want to share with you, I am a fan of using a liner in my decorative containers. Um, I save the pots from the nurseries and those are the ones I select pots that fit within my containers and I, um, I, I do my plantings in them. Now there's a couple reasons. I just mentioned I am a, a lover of those, those heavy glazed porcelain pots and therefore I don't want to move them around all the time, nor do I want to bring my soil and all my flowers and whatnot to the container. So it's much easier to just grab the pot out of the container and fill it and then um, put it back in place. It's also good be because it adds a bit to the water retention and it also creates a little void where if the roots get very large and they come through your drainage holes, um, they still will, um, will not be affected in its growth pattern. Okay, you got your containers now. Now it's time to select your plants. Here's a uh, photo of uh, a recent shopping trip that I took. You can see that I buy lots of plants when I start out. Um, and so in selecting your plants, there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, rather than going with a kindergarten approach, I call that the approach where you just pick up anything you like and somehow put it all together. Um, you want to have a purpose in choosing your flowers. So, or um, all the all the plantings you're gonna to put together. So you want to consider color combinations. I actually give that some thought to that at the beginning of every garden season. What color scheme do I want this year? Do I want an all white color scheme? Do I want to uh, work with the bold colors of blacks and oranges and reds? Do I want something more pastel like pinks and blues? And um, I, I, I plan for that and then try to have that trend going in all of my plantings. So once you've determined your color combination, you'll want to then be looking for a combination of plants that will give you um, vertical height in your containers, horizontal width and also cascading plants. Um, some of us have been trained to think of thrillers, fillers, and spillers. Um, I like to think of it as more three levels, three plants, and three different textures. Um, and again, if you're buying a multiple, um, buying for large containers, you'll want to buy in multiple. And you can see I've done that. Um, right to the upper left of my photograph, there's a whole flat of Dusty Miller um, because I do use a lot of that. I'm outside a lot in the evening hours and I like um, flowers that have silver and white tones so they show up better. So we are going to talk about um, recipes for those thrillers, fillers, and spillers or as I just mentioned, three heights, three plants, three textures. We're just bringing it kind of up to level because it makes it easier to understand how to put these together. So I'm using um, something that I borrowed from Proven Winners with their permission. Um, this is, and we're gonna take you through how these plants are designed. Your thriller plants, they're usually vertical. They are often the star of your container 
and um, it would be planted in the center if your pot is going to be seen from all sides and towards the back if you're just viewing it from the front. Um, some plants that are appropriate uh, as thriller plants are um, angelonia, elephant ear, grasses, canna. Um, you could even use shrubs and trees and sticks and art objects and whatnot as your thriller. <clears throat> Your filler plants are going to be at that medium level, um, that horizontal level. They're the mounding plants that tend to make your container look fuller and will, will grow um, horizontal so that they'll become even more spectacular as the season goes on. You'll want to plant those fillers um, midway between your container edge and your thriller plant. And also to get that nice roundness, you might want to take some time to weave your, um, your flower stems and whatnot throughout your uh, container to just help that growth not be so one-sided. Um, typical plants that work well for fillers are petunias, impatiens, salvia, um, and on and on. And then you've got your spiller plant. Actually, spillers and fillers can be one and the same plant or they can be used interchangeably. Um, so the spilling plant tends to be cascading in habit. It's gonna go over the edge of your pot. And that's the one that you're going to plant right at the, um, the edge of your container uh, so that it does grace down the, the size of your pot. So some plants are sweet potato vines, dichondra, licorice plant, just to name a few. And here you see the entire process of the um, design pulled together with the flowers and, and in color. The thriller plant here is blue summer snapdragon in the angelonia family. And the filler is a supertunia from proven winners called Bordeaux petunia. And then the spiller plant, one of my favorites because green is my favorite color, um, is the emerald lace sweet potato vine. Isn't it just spectacular? So quick recap of some of the types of plants you can use in your garden, you can use, or in your containers. You can use perennials um, and you can combine your perennials with your annuals and with other types of plants, including the herbs and the shrubs and, and whatnot. And you'll be seeing lots of examples as we advance through this talk. Um, here you see a selection of perennials. Uh, top left is one of those invasives I talked about. Um, that is a chameleon plant and I think the, the leaf colors are absolutely spectacular and that's what it's most known for, but I don't think it's spectacular when it's running through my lawn. Um, so putting it in a container is a nice way to enjoy um, the, the real um, highlights of this plant without it controlling you. I like to be in control of the plant. Echinaceas have come a long way. They keep cultivating echinaceas in different colors and forms. There's some that are um, grow in that flat pattern and others that droop down. Um, and there's wild colors and reds and golds and pinks and whites and um, just a lot of new and interesting, fascinating colors. And also echinaceas are um, being cultivated to come in different heights. So you can get some shorter ones that are perfect for containers. Um, irises, another um, item that fits well in containers. The thing to remember with, with perennials is that they have um, a particular flowering time. And once that time is over, then the, um, the, what is left is the foliage. Now, I happen to think foliage is just beautiful. And I think the strap-like, um, sword-like leaves on an iris plant are amazing in a container, can serve as a nice thriller, whether or not you have it in bloom or not. Down on the bottom, you have spiderwort, also called transcansia, uh, yarrow. Yarrow is another one that comes in different colors. And um, hookara, down on the bottom right, is one of my favorite gardening plants for containers. Um, they used to be a really, it was a plant that was known only for its small coral flowers. Um, the leaves are of no interest, but the industry has 
has provided us with a selection of amazing hookahs. Um, their leaves and uh, shapes are different. They can be roughly, they can be flat, they can be serrated. Um, their colors are wonderful. Sometimes they're two-toned in their colors, might be green on top and pink on the bottom. Um, and the nice thing about these is they're, they're a wonderful mounding plant, but then you can take them out and plant them in your, your landscaping um, for the next season. So you're actually getting double duty out of them. So annuals, perfect for containers. And the reason for that is they're always in bloom. And um, that's what we want from our containers. We want them to be full of color and lush and, and, and just simply beautiful. So annuals are the, um, the stay, if you will, um, of your containers. Now, here you on the upper left is uh, verbena. Again, that one comes in different colors. I'm going to be experimenting with what I call a pave garden this year, and I'm, I'm blending deep purples with a salmon color, both in verbena. So I'm thinking it's going to be an interesting blanket, at least I'm hoping. Uh, geraniums, different forms, different colors. Um, their leaves have beautiful markings to them as well. Uh, they tend to be a little bit bigger, so they make a great uh, thriller plant. Um, petunias have really changed over the years and they don't require as much maintenance as they used to. I could tell you stories of being out there outside in the dark in my rain gear, deadheading my petunias because I planted so many of them. Um, and it wasn't until they developed them that they didn't need as much um, maintenance that I ventured back into the petunia field again because their colors are spectacular and they're perfect. Salvia, the center one is black and blue salvia, another thriller plant to consider. And um, the hummingbirds love it. So not only do I use this at a great extent in my garden just for a touch of color um, throughout the season, but they're in my containers in all different levels so that my hummingbirds are, are happy and I'm happy seeing them visiting. And then you have your lantana, also a firework sort of uh, plant in that it comes in these wonderful um, cascading types of, of colors where it might go from a coral to an orange to a yellow and then there's uh, the pink one that goes to a deep purple and even the pink has some yellow. Beautiful and it only gets better as the season goes on and um, the butterflies love that one, especially the monarch. So if you're you're looking to attract pollinators into your gardens, these are some of the plants that you want to have on hand. Striking foliage is an absolute must in your containers. Um, up our left is the cypress grass. Cypress um, cypress used to be only. Um, only useful in water gardens because it required so much moisture. But again, it's been cultivated now so that it, it meets normal watering um, schedules and you can use it in, in conjunction with other plants. And um, I like a particular variety called King Tut because I like in beautiful and bold um, plantings. And King Tut can um, grow anywhere from two to three feet high. So, and it's got those wonderful little airy heads on the top. So um, doesn't hold up too well to wind though. So if it's, you wanna put it in a location that doesn't get too much wind um, and it will reward you with uh, being a very striking container. That Dusty Miller that I talked about earlier, you see those beautiful silver white leaves. It's got a little bit of a, like a velvet coat to them, if you will. Um, contrasts wonderfully with purple colors and, and whites. And uh, again, makes a wonderful mounting plant in your containers or fillers, if you want to call them that. Asparagus fern. Um, asparagus is a trailing plant. It, it's a little bit more cold tolerant than some of our other um, annuals that we use in the garden. So um, that also gives you that wonderful texture. And I, I want to talk a little bit about texture. Um, here, maybe this is a place to do that. I talk about using three textures in a container. Um, you do want... It's what creates your interest. So you want a combination of 
vertical plantings like sticky stem type things and you want some plants or flowers that have more of a broad pattern to them and then you want the delicacy of like the asparagus plants and the smaller um, uh, bokeh the flowers and whatnot so um, here again we're going back to dusty miller asparagus plant your fountain grass is another great thriller plant especially when they flower but their color is is magical elephant plants now those those can be a lot of fun they have um, cultivated them so their markings are spectacular um, some are spotted, some are black, there's green, there's variegated, and their leaf size can be anywhere from, say, 10 inches to, I had one once that was four feet. I had the picture, but I didn't find it in time. Um, those bigger four foot leaves you may want to save for your landscaping beds rather than your containers. And then this wonderful little plant on the right side, Dechondra, is a trilling plant. Again, it's got that purple, silver, excuse me, silvery, um, velvety touch to it. And sometimes I plant that just as a specimen plant in my containers because I love the way it blankets the container and trails down the side. Succulents um, make a wonderful contribution to your pots. They don't have, um, they have a very slow growth pattern and their roots are very small. They don't require a lot of water. Um, they offer another different texture in your plants uh, or in your plantings, I should say, and combine beautifully even with other types of plantings or just a variety of succulents by themselves. Don't forget your herbs. Um, edibles in your container, why not put them in with your flowers? I mean, they don't have to be separated. Um, you can, I, I love using the flat leaf parsley, um, the Italian parsley. I love the way that it tumbles down the pots and whatnot. They also make the curly parsley that's that's wonderful in containers, but think about it, rosemary and, and basil and all the different colorations that they come in now and and um, sage and thyme and, and oregano, all sorts of options that you can put into your container to add some um, some interest. And then there's vegetables right outside your door. So if you live in, a, in an area where you don't have a lot of land to plant a vegetable garden, um, plant them in your, your containers. They can grow on your balcony as long as they get enough light. Um, they'll be right outside your door for the picking and it protects them from wildlife and they can make statement plants. I think this one on the bottom here with the different colored leaf lettuce is spectacular. And um, I also like the eggplant in the upper right, um, and even the craziness of growing zucchini in a pot. You can imagine the spread of the zucchini leaves and, um, as that grows out. All right, you got your flowers, you got your containers, now it's time to plant them. First, you're going to take, well, I'm going to step it back here. <laughs> Um, first, you've got to go to your nursery and keep in mind that the smaller the plant container that you're purchasing, the more you're going to need to fill containers. I like to plant in sort of a triangular design. So if I am uh, choosing a mounding plant or a, um, a spiller plant, I tend to choose like three, four inch pots and then plant them triangularly around the, the foundation of the pot. Um, but shop the whole nursery. You don't just have to shop where the bedding plants are. Look at the shrubs to be the star of your containers, perennials, annuals, herbs, vegetables. Think of all of them, and the more creative you are in putting them together, the more unique your container is going to be, and the more pleasure you'll get. Now, let's gather up the other sort of things we need. This is our time to play in the dirt. So you want to um, have available some broken pot chards or gravel um, or even netting. I, I like to use the, um, the shower nets, the shower balls, 
and um, they break down over time. So I, I throw them into my potting area because I can just rip them off and that makes a nice uh, cover over the drainage holes. And all you're doing there by uh, using gravel and pot chars is just covering the drainage holes so the soil doesn't wash out through the holes. Um, you're going to need potting soil, uh, good quality potting soil. Hopefully it's not going to be red, wet and smelly because that means you've got bacteria in it. Um, you can purchase your soil already made up. Um, I am fond of the Pro Mix because they package it dry and therefore it's easier to manage getting from store to the potting area. And you can make your own soil. If you're going to be potting up a lot of containers, it might be more beneficial for you to make your soil. Very easy to do. It's just one part of everything. Um, peat moss, perlite, which is going to keep your, your um, soil light and airy, compost for nutrients, and good garden soil just to, to stabilize all of that. Um, put all of that together, mix it up, and you've got your garden soil. Optionally is using a slow-release fertilizer. Um, Osmocota is a brand that comes to mind, and the value of that is containers are hostage um, to, to us. We, they look towards us for all of the care and, and um, nutrients that they're going to get. They can't reach their little roots out into the soil and look for more. So it's really important to keep them healthy and, and performing at their best by fertilizing and having a regular fertilizing schedule. So by uh, including some slow release fertilizer into your soil mix, you can, um, it will release fertilizer every time you water. And then of course you have to have your plants gathered by so that we can get together with the design. So let's plant them up. Here you see the container. The bottom has the stones to cover um, the, the drainage holes. And then soil was added. The white that you see is the perlite in that garden soil. Um, it's important before you fill your container with soil that it is moist. Um, because you want your roots to start taking up the moisture right away and um, especially since soil tends to have a lot of peat moss in it, um, it's, it, it would be airborne very quickly and it takes time to, to soak up water to get it to the, um, the proper moisture. So moisten your fertilizer if it's not already before you put it in your pots. And then you want to bring the level up pretty much close to the brim of the pot, um, unless you know your plant sizes and, and you're going to set the level according to your pots. Um, insert your plants your um, tall ones, your bushy ones, your vine ones, also called thrillers, filler and spiller, um, and use your multiples if you're using small plants. And um, another tip is if you want to contain the, um, the moisture in your plants as, much, as best as you can, you can top your container with um, mulch or small pebbles or um, um, washed I think they're called washed glass, um, but you know that again adds a nice finishing touch to your container. And put your plants in. You want your root ball to come to the um, be at the top of the surface. You don't want to add two inches of soil to the root ball. Um, your roots are growing downward, so you want to bring the level of the plants up to the top of the container and have soil behind below that. I should mention with the, with the soil, um, from year to year, you, if you're using containers that does have a lot of soil in it, you only have to replace the top third of the soil. Um, that is just to give it some, some fresh nutrients and to give it the very best um, start out of the gate um, in your plantings. Then add your filler plants around that thriller, finish with your spillers, and pack those plants in. Remember that your um, container is only gonna get three to four months of, of growth there. And they we are putting them under some pretty extreme conditions there. So you want them to, to get right into the growing and the, and the producing of flowers, vegetation, and, and um, whatnot. So feel free to pack them in and, um, and that'll give them the best start. Uh, also, 
fill your soil um, just again to the top of the root balls, look for any voids in the soil, you know, around the pots and whatnot. Um, and then the last thing that I do in my containers is I jostle the pot, pick it up and give it a couple good whacks on tabletop. And that settles the soil around and shows me where else I might need to add in bits of soil um, to finish up the pot. Water it well and then just set it aside. Um, you want to make sure that it's kept moist, especially for the first couple of weeks that it's, it's um, I call it a little bit of a shock treatment. Um, but after that, you're, you're going to just um, check it on a daily basis to see how your containers are doing. One more tip for the best flowers. This one's the hardest one for me to do. Um, and that is remove your flower buds to encourage strong root growth. Um, it really does make a difference, but it is hard. You've planted up this beautiful container and it's looking just so lovely. And then to snap off things that are going to reward you with even more flowers is so hard to do. But I do have, I have a way around that. So after I've done my planting, I wait a day. I set them aside. I enjoy them, proud of my efforts. And then the next day I go down there with my clippers and I remove the flower buds. This is going to put the energy back into your roots um, so your roots will develop a strong foundation. And um, once you have strong, healthy roots, you're going to have plentiful flowers. Now that you've got your beautiful containers, you want to keep them healthy, happy, and beautiful. So you're going to do that by, once again, making sure that they're set in locations that get six hours of sun a day. Um, you made sure that you planted them in nutrient-rich soil. Um, next is their hydration. Um, flowers and, and plantings lose moisture through evaporating out, out of their leaves. And um, so therefore, um, you want to be sure that you're replacing that water on a regular basis. And as the growing season moves on and your roots get bigger and bigger, they're going to need even more water. So sometimes even twice a day um, is how often you'll have to water your plants. Um, remember to fertilize. If you're not using a slow release fertilizer uh, every couple weeks, you're going to want to use your favorite fertilizer. Um, you can develop your own schedule. Some people fertilize with a weak dilution of fertilizer every time they water. Others do it, you know, at a certain point, like the every two weeks. And then there's those of us that take the easier route and use the slow release um, fertilizers. <clears throat> and again, drainage. Um, we've already provided that in our planting. And the last thing is check those containers daily. Now that's your reward for making these beautiful containers. I love getting out there and seeing that there's, you know, three new buds or something has just opened up or the way the colors look with the leaves. And it's also a way for you to see if there's um, developing any issues. Um, maybe some pests have decided to visit or they're, um, you're seeing that they're a little lackluster and might need a little more attention. So just check them every day and um, follow their progress. You'll also want to groom your containers on a regular basis. And that's easily done if you're checking your containers every day. You want to remove spent flowers before they go to seed, um, remove any brown leaves and stems, and then trim your container plants so that they retain their shape and encourage more blossoms. Um, can't say that enough. When I mentioned earlier about cutting off the flower buds um, after you potted it so that it'll develop a, a healthy root system, your plants actually go through stages. You know, there's first developing the root, and then it's the developing and, and producing the, the flowers or the fruit, if you will. And then it goes into the reproducing stage of going to seed so that it can start all over again. You want to keep your containers during the growing season in that, um, that blooming period. So therefore you want to um, cut off anything that doesn't look tidy. And um, it's also, they're gonna stay much healthier with your hydration schedule, your fertilizing and your grooming. So let's talk about making our, our containers extraordinary in the way that we place them in our gardens or in our 
porches or in our on our decks, whatever. Um, grouping of containers is highly recommended. And when you do group, you want to vary the sizes of your containers. You want to vary the heights of your containers. And then you want to unify it with color and texture. Um, I think this this picture on the right illustrates all of that. You can see that the pots are all in different sizes, all in different heights, and um, they have all been unified by the use of the same colors um, consistently throughout all of the plantings. One color or monochromatic groupings um, are very easy to do. Maybe you're a fan of a particular color and you really find that there's different types of flowers that make you very happy in, in that color scheme. I should also say in the, um, in the 21st century, there is a tendency to do things in, um, monochromatically and just varying the tints and tones of those colors. So um, a yellow might include a pale yellow and a chartreuse green, um, but that's, that tends to be very much the, the way we're, we're headed um, in the 21st century. And again, um, place those similar colors together and vary that scale for, for interest. Um, if you have a garden area that maybe has um, done its thing for the season, perhaps a spring garden where you have daffodils or tulips planted, um, you can use your containers to fill in those voids and add a real pow accent to your garden. I like to elevate them on pedestals because it gets them above the flowers and your other landscaping. And, um, but just look how majestic this plant is on the right with the canna and um, the coleus and, and uh, there's so many different plants in there, I can't even make them all out. But it does um, provide a wonderful accent in your garden. It, it, it um, can be used singularly or you can use them in pairs. If you use them singularly, I think of them as like, um, like a, a, a road map. Um, you can place them in, pla in spots where you want people to stop and look and um, or you can place them at junctions where you want them to turn right or left in, in your garden paths. And you can also use them in pairs to indicate an, um, an entry point or um, a, pla a path beginning. So think about the placement. Now if you're doing things in pairs, I would suggest that you try to have your containers um, looking the same because you want that balance when you're doing it in a pair. But singularly, you can have all different types of uh, plantings going on. Repetition in your containers is, um, is a good thing to have. Sometimes I say more of the same can be a good thing. And here you see these window boxes that have been consistently um, placed across the front of the home. And, uh, you know, one flower box would have been nice, but three flower boxes are spectacular. So think about that. Time to move into the inspiration part. Just imagine as a slogan I use in my decorating, vision, uh, decorating business, um, but it's kind of like the way I've lived my life. And uh, so here I want to inspire you with containers that have been developed that might give you some ideas for how you can combine different plantings and whatnot together. On the left here is a hanging plant that has a chartreuse um, succulent serving as a mounding plant. And then that coleus that um, you see there with the beautiful magentas veining in it um, serves as the thriller. And that what you can't see in that container, but I can see it. I don't know if I, I can't move my cursor around. Um, but what you can't see is that there is a black sweet potato vine serving as a trailer. This was early in the season, but it did, um, it did trail down and, and pull in all of the, um, the colors and the elements together. Notice again that texture. You've got the broad leaf of the coleus to the little delicateness of the, um, the succulents there. This one on the right, um, actually I, I just watched someone else's um, talk on container gardening and she was an excellent, excellent designer. And I just was struck by this. I had to borrow this because I think it's a recipe I want to try. But they ha she has married the pot, that purple pot, 
to the flowers that um, were combined in there for this monochromatic scheme. And if you look in the center, she's got the Japanese painted fern um, with that nice deep purple um, stem and then the silverness of the vine. I wonder, I, I look at things and I take things out. I don't think that pot would be successful without that silverness there, but just, you know, just right there um, combined with the uh, supertunias and the, um, I think that's spirea up above, I, it's hard for me to tell, um, just, just gorgeous. Don't forget your shrubs. Um, shrubs can be part of your containers. You can use other plants with your shrubs or you can plant your shrubs um, solely in the container. One point to remember is that they can't live forever in your containers. So you, if you're looking to use shrubs or trees in your containers, have a plan where you can move them into your landscaping in a year or two. Um, and that way you're not going to have any cracked pots or um, damage to your plants. Here's some um, plants to the left. Notice that beautiful emerald green, well not emerald green, mossy green, mossy green of the, um, the container and how the designer has used the cardoon flower as the thriller, bringing the height of that container up even more to the eye and then using dichondra to cascade over the um, container just adding a little bit of, of softness to the, um, to the ceramic. And then just that little contrast of the little white flowers just makes it very, very interesting. Not overpowering, not wild, but beautiful container. This one on the right, I have tried, I, I've actually got the plants to make new containers of this this year. I love this one. Simple, um, two plants and two levels. Remember, um, I think I mentioned earlier that the guidelines or the rules that we have for containers are also meant to be broken. Um, and so go with, go with your feelings sometimes. And this one is quite effective. It's got the, the height of the um, king tuck grasses and then the base of it is just underplanted with white alyssum um, that serves as that nice trailing mounding ball at the base of them. So I just think it is just fun. Simple, very simple. Pull up a chair. If you've got any chairs that um, are looking for a new life, plantings, um, these little whimsical touches in your garden are perfect for that. On the right, you have this antique chair that's missing a seat. And uh, how easy is that to just pop a container right into the former seat and um, add that interest there. And then sit it in your garden. I mean, that vertical point in your garden is a wonderful accent. And here we have a chair that was just used as, as a pedestal, if you will. Um, the pot is simply placed on top of it. But again, the design is, is inclusive of everything you see in that image from the color of the chair to the color of the plant to the color of the accents surrounding it. Here's some containers using succulents and I deliberately used these two, chose these two to see the, um, the wow and the versatility of succulents. In the left hand side, you see a um, triple fountain that has been refitted with plantings perfect for succulents because it's not very deep. Uh, they don't need a lot of soil. And um, I think between the, the container that was chosen and the plantings that are put in there, I love that little um, uh, string of pearls that is cascading over the edges, um, makes for a very, very exciting planting. And then over to the right, just a little soup ladle has been used for this container. I know you can easily drill a hole through it for drainage, get your soil in and put little baby starts of, of um, succulents in there. Again, not needing a lot of water. Um, they're very easy to pro propagate and they're easy to care for. So um, think about succulents. And here's um, a, a couple of other containers. When you move them into the sun, I have, found a new love for 
for succulents. In fact, I have another talk called Stunning Succulents that's been um, very well received. But um, I moved them outside in the summer months, and that's when their story starts to be told. The sun just brings out the wonderful colors, and and um, it sometimes their their edges of their um, plantings turn a little rose or even turn blacker. Um, they start to produce some wild flowers, but if you notice, they're all um, planted quite tightly together, and that's how you can successfully work with succulents. I call them mosaics. The one on the right is actually um, very similar to a container that I grow vertically here in the home, but it will soon go down to the front door and be my front door accent for the summer. So it's getting lots of sunlight, it's getting um, lots of rain and, and other things out there. And um, it's also serving as a decorative element for me. So I like to do it all. Color, texture, and form. This is what our containers produce. And uh, this one on the left that is done very simply with just um, coleus. But what I like about it is the stark contrast of the colorations that were selected. To me, it looks like a double double dip cone, ice cream cone, with two different flavors. My favorite way to have an ice cream cone. So um, I like the black on the lower side and, the, and the, um, the more pastel colors on the upper side. And over on the right, um, talking about form, this is spectacular. The beautiful shape of the Persian shield um, with the creeping Jenny cascading over the pot. And notice how they they mirrored the color of the pot to their mounding flowers there. So just another way to think about putting it all together. Window boxes, um, we talked about them being perfect vehicle for your deck railings and um, fences, gates, and of course your windows. Um, here are two examples. This is where I wanna point out the symmetry um, that should be used in the design of your window boxes. Because they are more linear in shape, um, it's best to do a very, very formal planting in your window boxes using um, symmetry. And what I mean by that is if you were to take an invisible line through the middle of your window box and um, look to the left and look to the right, they would be, they would balance each other out. And uh, that just brings in the window box to the vignette of the, um, the window and, and the entire uh, area around it. This colorful window box I uh, found one time when I was in Massachusetts. I wish I could tell you whether it was Cape Cod or Lenox, Mass, because no matter where I go up there, um, I see spectacular um, window boxes. And this one is, the recipe is very simple. Fan flower, which is the purple you see there. Um, Bocapa, the little tiny white flowers that are cascading over, the chartreuse of the sweet potato vines, and then the calicabroas, um, the million bells that are in a million colors, it seems. I was, and when I was visiting the nursery earlier, a um, few weeks back, I was amazed at all the different colors that are available in these little million bells. Uh, groupings. Um, this just shows you a, a, a pleasant grouping and how it's all tied together using uh, similar colored pots. And um, they have, however, changed the plantings in the different containers, but it all works because they've used the, um, the three levels, the three plant principle, and the, um, the three textures. I really am struck by the pot on the left that combines the spikiness of the, um, the silver yucca and the, um, the succulent at, at its base. I think you could call this like a shoulder um, arrangement. If you've got shade and you're looking for something that you can plant in the shade, here's a wonderful um, example of color in a shady area. It's very simple. Common begonias, um, use her in your striking color, combined with Jack Frost brunera and variegated rubber plant. So we have perennials, annuals, and what I call house plants. I mean, they 
rubber plants do grow outside, but not in our zone. Um, so I tend to, to bring them inside during, um, after the growing season outside. But look at how spectacular um, the colors and the modeling all work together. Foliage makes great containers. This again is another example of where we're going in 2021. Um, and you see here that this has been effectively combined with dichondric, creeping jenny. Um, the, the purple is the transcanthia. Carex grass serves as our thriller. And then you've also got the addition of sweet potato vine. Um, but no flowers, lots of interest though. And the secret is in the texture that was used. I threw this in just for fun, but clever, very, very clever. Um, if you've got an old baby grand around and you want to um, turn it into something for your garden, why not make it into a fountain? Isn't this just spectacular? And a container too. Remember I said it's just got to hold dirt and provide for drainage. So um, here you go. So if you no longer are playing piano and no longer have um, anybody else interested in piano, playing piano, perhaps you'll want to repurpose it. And if you don't have anybody, you can repurpose it to me. I'd be happy to have something like this in my garden. Containers also can make wonderful screens, especially if you're looking to add some privacy or protection from the wind. Um, I use containers of uh, lemongrass outside of our garden room because it keeps the, it, well, it does provide me some privacy, but it also keeps the mosquito population down. So there's some benefits there too. These little planters are, are just can be so much fun. Um, I, I have several of them in my garden and um, they don't have a big vessel area for um, planting, but you don't need to, you know, the whole, the whole container makes the statement. I have fun with succulents and the quirky new grasses, um, the pepper plants that are out there. Um, it, it, it's, it's up to you how you want to produce it. Think about your best hair day and then go for it. Porches and patios can be transformed through the use of containers and um, it can take something that is very cold and uninviting and make it a place where you're going to want to just languish for hours and hours and hours at a time. And of course, we have that right now, don't we? So, um, you know, if, if I can create a porch like this on the left, I hope you'll all come by. I'll have lemonade and iced tea available for you. but. Um, Think about using things in mass and um, putting them all together so that you can just feel totally blessed with what's around you. I want to point out this little grouping on the deck on the right because they have combined um, flower boxes with, with containers on the various stages. You almost forget that you're seeing a, a, um, a, a deck beyond it because it's so pretty. You are watching those flowers. Don't wait for someone to bring you flowers. Plant your own and decorate your soul. I'm going to end with this picture. This um, is just so inviting. I just, um, I, I think the plantings, again, if you take those plantings out, would that area be as interesting and inviting? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, just even simple containers with the one plant of its own in each container can be very, very extraordinary. So I hope that um, you can create your own sense of isolation in, in your gardens as we wait out this pandemic and enjoy the time with color, uh, naturalness, and beauty. And that wraps it up. Um, here I'll leave up uh, as we talk, quest take questions, you know, um, the hotline for calling us Master Gardeners if you've got any questions, how you can reach us through our website and via email. And I always, in the various talks I do, try to have a supporting Pinterest board um, to the talk. So I do have a board on Pinterest called Container Gardening. So feel free to go look for me there and uh, follow me 
and have fun with it. You'll find instructions, inspiration, um, items you might want to purchase, and so on and so forth. So thank you for sharing your lunch with me. And um, if we have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now. Happy playing in the dirt. Well, thank you, Denise. That was fantastic.